Welcome to the AI The Future of Us, a podcast-style video series that explores the ways AI is shaping our future and how we can prepare for the changes that lie ahead. I am your host, Ferhat Sekiner, and today we are joined by Yasmin Ahmed, who is a Managing Director, Product Activation and Data Analytics within Google Cloud. Thank you for being here today, Yasmin. It's a pleasure, Ferhat. So, uh, could you share uh, some of the AI developments that you witnessed during your career for us? Absolutely. So, actually, my career started back in the uh, in hands-on on data as a data scientist. And in fact, before I was in the business world, I was in the academic world. And what amazes me is many of the um, AI algorithms that we talk about, even the large language model algorithms, Many of those have existed in academic papers for decades, uh, but very much so only a few or select people could access those algorithms because the infrastructure, the compute, et cetera, was just not there to be able to take advantage of these AI algorithms. So what I have seen over my career is back in those data science days, we would dabble with deep learning um, algorithms, with neural networks, with with sophisticated AI, but most times we would come back to doing just machine learning, the, the standard kind of predictive models in machine learning. So there was a lot of dabbling, but the, the infrastructure just wasn't there. And suddenly, very rapidly, what we've seen is the compute infrastructures have developed rapidly, the storage, et cetera, which means storing, accessing large volumes of data has become cheap enough and the compute has become accessible enough that actually today you can take advantage of AI, not just as a data science experiment, but now in the real world. Yes, you are absolutely right. And taking me myself back into my academic life as well, what you said, it's I used to work at the National Supercomputing Services and it was so expensive, right, that the supercomputers, tens of millions of dollars, now you can get it, particularly because of the cloud as well, just, at, you know, at the access of your fingertips, right? And this gives us phenomenal opportunities. But one of the keys that we are seeing is that the data governance and data governance is going to be a central concern in particular with the implementation of the Gen AI across every aspect of the business. A majority of the tech enterprise have started to communicate different guidelines and guardrails reflecting the ability for em- employees to leverage different Gen AI solutions, right? And this is really driven by the data garden and security concerns as well. And those in particular building customer facing, uh, you know, Gen AI capabilities embedded into their core products must take it ve- must take very specific steps. In your opinion, what are the key data governance considerations if you are applying LLMs and Gen AI within your organization or within your applications? That's a great question for us. So before we even get into specifics of governance and data quality and lineage, et cetera, fundamentally, one of the strong things I'm hearing from our customers here at Google is, is AI secure? And all of these large language models that are being hosted by various entities across the world, when I send my data to the AI, am I exposing myself? Because I'm taking my data out of a really secure data cloud environment, and I'm sending it to an an AI, to an LLM, to train the large language model, to execute on the large language model. And even in terms of large language model prompts, am I sending PII information in that prompt to an an AI LLM somewhere else. So one of the core principles that also we believe here at Google is bring the AI to your data. Your data is secure within your data cloud. You should not be taking your data out of your data cloud and and sending it to an AI, uh, to a bolted on AI piece. It's got to be about bringing the AI and infusing it with your data platform so that you are keeping your data within that secure perimeter that you have. So whether it's training large language models or it's sending prompts to large language models, your data should not be exposed to the outside world. And another concern I hear is as we're training these large language models and AI, is the AI learning from my company's data? Because my company's data is sensitive and I don't want that being accessible to other companies out there. So I also think fundamentally, 
it starts with ensuring that AI is governed itself. So the AI is sandboxed. So your company data, PII information never actually leaks into the main core large language model. And so the large language model will not learn your company's sensitive information and then pass it on to another company. So those are a few core principles that we're operating on. It's bring the AI to your data, not your data out of your secure perimeter to the AI. And secondly, sandbox large language models so that yes, you can tune and, and, and train them, but the tuned and trained version of the large language model is never accessible to anyone outside your enterprise. And absolutely, and I, I hear what you're saying because when you bring your uh, data, you know, AI to your data, effectively, you you still have full control of your data. You control what goes into the model as well, right? And all, and in Google, we follow the key, key principles around we are we don't use anyone else's data on training our models, right? So, and this is a key uh, key capability that we provide, and. And why do you think that the data governance is so important for successful implementation of GNAI as well with that in mind? And, and here's the thing with governance for, for GNAI. It's when you're training these models, they are learning from the data that is being passed into the model. So governance becomes super critical because that model, to be trusted, to be responsible, to be reliable, it's all about the data foundation that you feed it. And if your data foundation is has data that has biases encoded in it or incorrect inaccuracies, errors, the model will learn those inaccuracies or those errors. The model will learn those biases. So it's actually not the algorithms or the models that are biased. In fact, I often say, you know, an algorithm is just maths, it's just calculations. It's actually the underlying data that often contains those biases, that contains those inaccuracies, those issues. So governance really has a critical role here in ensuring that data foundation is trusted, that data foundation is high quality. So do you know where the data came from, the lineage of that data? Can you profile that data and understand the quality? Can you assess that data and ensure it's robust enough that you're going to run your business and make decisions based on an LLM that's trained on that data? Yes, and it's it's I think the key to uh, have human centric approach, right? And having that humanity in in your applications, you are effectively eliminating all the bias around it as well by using the right tool and right data sets, and by using the data sets that you really trust in as well. Uh, and then with that, I want to you know uh, take it to a uh, slightly di different approach in a sense that data analytics and machine learning within organizations are often treated as two separate disciplines. And, and applying the data governance across because of that, an ML governance becomes challenging. Where do you see the main challenges on, on this and how can we really improve a little bit on that as well? That's a great question. And I think it's time to stop thinking about data, machine learning, AI, all of these things in silos. So in fact, now when we're thinking about our strategy and roadmaps around governance, we're talking about governance extended from data to AI. And that incorporates not just your structured data, it's all types of data, right? You need governance across your, your unstructured and your structured data, your entire lake house. But then moving beyond the data, oh, and sorry, it might even include third, third party data sets. But then moving beyond the data, that governance has to extend to any analytic model that you're building, whether it's a machine learning model, a large language model, whatever kind of AI model that you build, you need governance across the analytics. And when we talk about analytics governance, it's ensuring that it's not just the data that you're version controlling and managing and watching, you're actually version controlling, managing, watching, measuring the analytic models because over time those analytic models will change they will adapt you want to continue to monitor those models are they as effective accurate as they were when you launched the model how do you track that over time also how do i do things like a b testing with models my data science teams my analytic teams are constantly innovating 
how do I watch all of these different models and understand which is performing or are not so great? And critical here is for regulated industries. For regulated industries, if you make a decision using a machine learning or an AI model a year ago about giving somebody a loan, the regulators can come and ask you, why did you make that decision? Why did person A get the loan and person B didn't? And you need to be able to explain what those models did. And explainability is a huge issue that we're seeing come up in the AI world, especially with things like large language models. It's not always easy to explain why the model made the decision it, it did. And so really being able to govern models, version control, understand what, which version of the model was running and be able to go back to it. These are all concepts that are really important and really do extend governance beyond data to AI. Yes, and, and that's interesting, right? And it comes back into a little bit of data and also how you apply the main principles of building applications as well. You need to, it, the way that I always say is that it is test, test and test. So you need to bring your you need to understand the data that goes in, but it's an iterative process. You need to test, you need to understand a little bit what's going on, because usually the, the main organizations treat as a black box, really. It, it, they don't understand what's going on, or some algorithm is very difficult to understand what, you know, how they uh, process the data that you have and how they come out with the decisions. And, and I hear you. So, and with that, you know, I would like to look ahead a little bit within the AI and data analytics ecosystem. And what do you believe is the most exciting potential for AI application we have yet to see, and in particular with the Gen AI in, in, you know, in mind as well? Great question. And so as I think about the future of AI and also taking into account the governance piece, today what I hear from customers is they are making sure there is a human in the loop. So we're working on some exciting marketing Gen AI use cases but today, organizations are talking about there's still being a human in the loop that validates, even if it's spot checking different outputs from the large language models. So today I see those new applications are emerging, but there's still caution. There's still um, an element of being careful about how we apply those LLMs. But as I look into the future, those applications are just numerous across the enterprise. And I think as we get more sophisticated in our AI approaches and we're more sure about the governance around the data and AI too, those applications are only going to explode across the enterprise. And in particular, I think with Gen AI, different to other analytics um, algorithms or technology I've seen, it's not just about unlocking new use cases and delivering business value through a use case. To me, Genii has the potential of really fundamentally helping organizations change the way they operate. Genii has the promise of delivering huge amounts of productivity, efficiency gains from your data teams who actually will not have to spend all that time engineering and wrangling data because large language models can help you do that and often do it better than a human can. And so we're going to see Gen AI really running as, a, as an assistant, as a support to various roles in the organization, whether it's the data team or it's a customer services representative in the call center. And so as Gen AI really evolves to take that role and help make us as humans more productive, I'm really excited to also see what we as humans can do with that extra bandwidth that we get from, from Gen AI taking on some of those laborious tasks. So I think there's a huge shift coming in the way that humans and, and AI interact. And that AI is really going to allow us to free up our diaries. It's today where we're spending all of this time doing data engineering, data wrangling, if you're um, spending lots of times doing document processing manually, if an AI can help you be more efficient and more productive, then the potential of you as a human and what you do and get involved with is, is open to many possibilities. And that's what makes me excited for it. Yes, and thanks for it. And and certainly we'll be seeing lots of lots of productivity gains. And we are all started, you know, using this one way or another in our lives as well. Uh, but the, everyone is also talking around what will happen to my role. You know, I'm a data professional. I'm an AI professional. This is this is kind of my last question as well here. 
what advice would you like to give to individuals and businesses looking to prepare for a future in, as you said, which, you know, particularly LLM Power AI is going to play a more significant role? What advice would you like to give it to them? So I am absolutely not worried about AI taking over all the data jobs, because here's the thing. I have been now working with um, various customers, organizations in, in um, our world, looking at their digital transformation journeys. And actually what we have seen over time is those digital transformation journeys have stalled because the number of use cases, the impact of digital transformation across many different business functions on your entire business model is so big and radical that just humans working harder at a task is not going to allow us to digitally transform. So in fact, we need the AI and the large language models. We need the new innovation that allows us to unlock that next level of disruption, innovation, and allows us to truly digitally transform as organizations. So I see it as humans working smarter, not harder. So I do think roles will evolve and adjust, but I think in this new world, it's it's going to be, again, humans being involved in higher level tasks in different kind of job roles versus what, what we're doing today. Yes, and I totally agree with you. In fact, this is also supported by research that comes in from numerous you know, economic uh, journals as well. I've, I've read one recently which focuses on the U.S. economy and arguing that effectively what we'll see with Gen AI will be similar to what we have seen with the personal computers. When they came, you know, people didn't lose their jobs, but the economy was uplifted in time because all, exactly as you said, with the productivity gains that we all got. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed for joining us today, Yasmin. It has been incredibly insightful to hear your thoughts on the impact and effective use of AI and the challenges uh, that lie ahead in terms of data governance in particular as well. We look forward to seeing how AI will continue to shape the world around us and hope our viewers will be inspired to embrace its potential and opportunities. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Parat.